Paul Bertarelli reporting for AvWeb and Aviation Consumer. I'm flying with my friend Paul Hollowell and his lavishly equipped Cessna 182. Arrayed before us is a full G1000 panel. You know, not everybody can afford one of those or wants one of those, but there's no reason you can't have a little bit of weather and traffic data in your airplane if you are willing to buy one of these things, which is a portable ADSB receiver. Now, we thought that the portable market was about to die because the mandate, the 2020 ADSB mandate, stood upon us. But at Oshkosh and uh, later in the summer, we saw three new product introductions. And we're going to take a look at those in this video, starting with a technical overview. We're going to get to these gadgets, but first, in case you're not an aviation nerd, what the hell is ADSB anyway? Here comes the one minute description. The letters stand for Automatic Dependent Surveillance Broadcast. ADSB is supposed to eventually replace radar for air traffic control in the U.S. and in most parts of the world. Rather than bouncing radar signals off airplanes, ADSB actually reports the airplane's exact position with a data transmission through these towers. They look a little bit like cell phone towers. They aren't. The towers are all over the place, so coverage is almost universal. ADSB is a two-way deal. ADSB out is the part that tells air traffic precisely where your airplane is based on GPS position. But to sweeten the deal and to get people to buy ADSB, the FAA also made the data flow the other way, so ADSB can transmit weather and traffic information to the cockpit. That's ADSB in. Very good thing. The whole system works on two frequencies. One is 978 MHz and the other is 1090 MHz, dual band as they say. If you want to fly above 18,000 feet, at least in the U.S., you have to use 1090. And by the way, if you really understand these diagrams, you're a steely-eyed missile man. Now, if your neighbor happens to be a pilot and you lean across the fence and say, hey, how's it hanging? It will take him about 10 seconds to say, FAA is making me put ADSB into my airplane. It's going to cost $4,000 and I have to do it by 2020. It's a true first world problem. But if you want to fly in the U.S. without airspace restrictions, you're going to have to pony up. But these three gadgets have nothing to do with that 2020 requirement I just explained. There are a gazillion ADSB out choices. Well, really 32. These do satisfy the requirement, but these have nothing to do with these. These are all ADSB in receivers, and that's what makes them such good deals. Let's take a look. Here are the three newest receivers, and let's start with this one. It's called the Sentry. It's being offered by ForeFlight, and you'll recognize them as the leading aviation app supplier. And no surprise, the Sentry works only with ForeFlight. This is a dual band receiver, as are the other two, and that means for traffic, it sees the general aviation low altitude UAT targets with some limitations, plus the fast movers above 18,000 feet. That's good because airliners have to land eventually, and you'll want to see them when they get down into Indian country. The Sentry has two additional features. One is an AHARS, or Attitude Heading Reference System, basically a solid state gyro, and it also has a built-in carbon monoxide detector. Mechanically, there's not much to it, just the basic box, a power switch, and these three enunciator lights. For mounting, it has this bayonet lug on the back and a ram suction cup. The Sentry, by the way, is made by UAvionics. They're the guys who make the navigation and taillight sky beacon ADSB out units that we've been reporting on. Sentry sells for $499. Now, before ForeFlight hooked up with UAvionics, they had a deal with another company called Aperio. They make this ADSB receiver called the Stratus, and this is the latest version of it, the Stratus 3. The price is $699 and has some of the same features as the Sentry, but no carbon monoxide detector. One unique thing about the Stratus 3 is that Aperio makes a version of it that will pair up with their Stratus 1090 transponders to provide ADSB in, which the transponders don't have. That's what these jacks on the side are for. They're remote GPS and ADSB antennas. For mounting, the Perio provides this gel non-slip sleeve so you can place it on the glare shield. There's also a ram suction mount for a window. 
Like the Sentry, the Stratus has just a power switch and these three enunciators that indicate GPS and ADSB reception, plus the battery state. The Stratus 3 talks to all of the popular flight apps, including ForeFlight. Now, even though I've got three ADSB receivers here, don't get the impression that this covers the entire market. There are at least 10 others, and with that many to choose from, the market has become price competitive. And that's where this one comes in. It's the DRX from Dynon, and it's the smallest of the bunch by a few fractions of an inch, and also the least expensive at $345 discounted. It's also a dual band receiver, but it doesn't have the onboard AHARS capability, which is one reason it's the least expensive. It's the only one that has an external antenna, and that folds out of the way for storage and carrying. This is the battery charging port, and the DRX has by far the longest battery endurance of any of these receivers. Dynon doesn't give an exact number, but I ran it for at least 16 hours. The DRX works with all the major apps. In the airplane, I initially had a little trouble getting it to talk to ForeFlight, but it worked fine on a subsequent trial. I'm guessing there were some interference issues with all three running at once. So now you've seen a general overview of these uh, products. We're in the airplane. The question is, where do you mount them? The answer is, wherever you can. Now, because two of these have AHARs, that's the Century and the Stratus, the Stratus 3, they have to be uh, oriented consistently. In the case of the Stratus 3, it has arrows at the front of the unit that have to be pointed forward. Now, as I pointed out, it has a non-slip gel pad that allows you to just sit it on top of the glare shield. And that's okay, but there are two problems with it. One is that to get whacked by serious turbulence, it's going to come off the glare shield. And laws of physics being what they are, it'll go under a seat where you can't get at it. Secondly, during the summer when the sun is high, it gets warm. And anything on the glare shield gets hot. And the Stratus has a temperature limit, it's 140 degrees. If it gets hotter than that, it will stop functioning. Is it possible to get that hot? Yeah, it is. So the better choice in that case is to mount it on the window, and uh, you can get a uh, $20 mount that includes a ram suction cup, and it has a bracket for the Stratus, and you can stick it on the window in the shade. The slight problem with that is in the past we've noticed that in turbulence those will also fall off, so make your choice. My choice would be to put it on the uh, window in the shade if I had the mount. As far as setting these things up to get them to talk to things, well, in this case, we've got all three of them running. And you can see on the iPad, they appear as three wireless networks, and you simply pick the one you want to use. And that applies to all of these things. As I said, there are about a dozen of them out there, and all but one or two work through uh, wireless. Uh, one, I think, has Bluetooth. So you just select the one you want, and then you go into the app and do whatever calibrations necessary if they have the ARs. This is what the basic foreflight looks like uh, being driven by the Sentry. It has a device manager which you can go into and you can uh, read various data about what the Sentry is doing, including the uh, battery level, uh, the firmware level, and various uh, parameters that you can set up. Now I'll take a look at the traffic. Now, as I mentioned before, we have ADSB out here, so we're getting the full traffic package. And what that means is this. ADSB is set up to be a two-way system so that aircraft are called participating aircraft report their position through ADSB and they use WASH GPS to determine their position. If they're a participating air aircraft and they have ADSB out, they get a traffic package localized to the area they're in. And that will show them all of the traffic in the area. It's about a 15 mile radius, including airplanes that aren't equipped with ADSB but are equipped with mode C. Now this is the limitation of using an app like this for traffic. If you don't have mode C out, you may or may not get the local traffic package. Circumstances where you will get it, if there's an airplane nearby and the traffic package is sent to that aircraft, you may receive it on the ADSB receiver and get the full picture. But you really never know how close an ADSB out airplane is. 
In our case, uh, the device manager told us that it's sensing our ADSB out and gave us the end number. So we are seeing a pretty complete traffic package on ForeFlight. And it's really as complete, Paul, don't you think, is what we're seeing on the uh, uh, yeah. 1000? Yeah, I think so. As far as the traffic itself is concerned, if you tap on the traffic, you will get information on the uh, aircraft. Sometimes you get the end number, you get the aircraft type, the heading, the speed, and so forth. And these blue lines are what are called uh, vectors, and uh, those are the one minute vectors, so that's where the airplane will be in one minute. And uh, that helps you with traffic avoidance if you're trying to maneuver around the target. The faster the traffic is, the longer that vector is. As weather goes, as I mentioned, all of these ADSB receivers give you a full complement of all the weather products that come through what's called FISB, Flight Information S uh, System Broadcast. And if you want to look at the various weather, you can just uh, tap on the waypoints. So what the AHARS output looks like, it's on the left side, and you can configure the screen to be uh, full screen or uh, half screen with either the map display or the AHARS. And it does require some calibration, and uh, this little gear down on the lower left side gives you the option of calibrating however you want. And we've got this set up to show the synthetic vision in the background. It really works quite well. Uh, you can see airports, you can see terrain features, you can see uh, water, and when we took off, I showed you earlier, you can also see obstacles, and you get warnings on obstacles and traffic. For the uh, minimalist version of these new ADSB receivers, which is the uh, Dynon DRX, so I'll go ahead and connect that to the wireless. So I'm going to use it uh, and show you what it looks like on Wing X Pro. Since it doesn't have the AHARS, we're not going to get any kind of AHARS uh, representation. But it does have uh, all of the weather, so it outputs all of the same products uh, that the other two apps do. It just does so for a lot less money. So well, that's a roundup on the three latest ADSB receivers. As you can see, the performance is really quite good, and I've noticed in the years we've been covering them that the performance has gotten better. They're a little more reliable. Uh, the battery life has much improved, and uh, price points are all over the map. Now, the DRX, which is the low price in this group, is $345, but if you want to get into ADSB, you can actually get in a little cheaper than that. Uh, there's a one called the Scout that's just under $200, and if you want to spend even less than that, you can build your own called the Stratix, and I'll put a link down below that explains how to do that. But don't take my word for it. You can find a full review in the December 2018 issue of Aviation Consumer Magazine. Of course, on the other hand, I wrote that article, so I guess you do have to take my word for it. Sometimes life isn't fair. This is Paul Bergarelli reporting for Avweb and Aviation Consumer. Thanks for watching.